God bless you. So, first, well, I'd had a dream. Somewhat bizarre. Now, in the dream specifically, I was looking at Bible verses, but they kept changing. And I was on a, like some kind of laptop in the dream in a kind of bluish hued room. Uh, the laptop was on some sort of table. But it was looking at Bible Gateway. Now, I don't know if you know Bible Gateway. I uh, It's a website specifically that allows you to look at Bible translations. Not only is it different translations, you can find verses and all the books of the Bible and see that translation in those books. Now, it was really weird. I was looking at the screen. I wasn't touching anything, but just kind of looking at it. And it kept changing, but it kept talking about the exact same thing again and again. And it was to do with refinement, to be refined. And it would keep saying it. Now, I couldn't see what the verses were, but only they kept speaking on the same thing again and again. And there's points where I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing God of the cosmos puts you through the refiner's fire. Now, I don't know the word cosmos. So I've had to go on to the dictionary to find this word cosmos. And it says the universe regarded as an orderly, harmonious whole. An ordered, harmonious whole, harmony and order as distinct from chaos. So one of the words I'm hearing is God of the cosmos puts, puts you through the refiner's fire. Now I know of no translation that would use that. Now... That was one of the things I saw as the screen was changing. It was rapidly changing constantly, but always saying the same thing, but changing it. So then it was the God of heaven and earth refines you to a fine point. Then God refines you to a fine edge. Now, each time I saw the word fine point and fine edge, it was like I saw like a very white point, like a knife, but it was pure white. Another time, that fine edge was like the fine tapered edge of a very sharp knife made of something white, perhaps like ceramic or something, I'm unsure. And it had kind of like a pattern upon it, like, you know, like, oh, what do they call that? Damascus steel, where you have, or the refined katana. We see the watermark. That's the word I'm after, the watermark on the katana. Forget the Damascus steel, my apologies. That watermark on a decent katana. That. On this fine point. On this fine edge. Of this uh, like knife. God refines you to a fine edge. And then God puts you through the fuller's fire. And I was like. I don't know that one either. So. I've tried to find verses in my bible. That specifically speak about God and refining us, refining his people, about people tried by fire. So first and foremost, it's to always test everything with scripture. Now, first I'm going to go to First Peter chapter 1. So if you'd like to come across into First Peter chapter 1. And it's going to be from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious 
than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So this is talking here about the trial of faith, one's faith being tried, and it comes out ever more refined, where it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious, so that means it's got far higher value, faith does, than gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the first appearing of Jesus Christ. And it's that faith in Christ. So this was talking about faith being tried, which is also where in James, where he talks about with being tried and trials breed patience, ready for every good work. But this particular verse I did not seek in this study, though I know it. So then from here I went to Malachi chapter 3. So now we have to go into Malachi. And in Malachi it will be chapter 3 verses 1 to 5. We'll get there shortly. There we are, almost there, just after Zechariah. There we go. Verses 1 to 5. Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For this is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So this talks about this now full of soap. That's like a purifying soap. Gets absolutely everything out till it comes out pure white. Full of soap. This refining fire to purify. Taking out the corruption of metal if you ever do any tempering or working with steel. You have to beat it and beat it, fold it and beat it, beat it, fold it, beat it again and again. And you're taking out all that corruption out of it, making it ever more fit for purpose. It's a hard work, a laborious duty. But who can stand for God when they have to go through the refiner's fire? Right, full of soap, purified. Refined ever further, ever more fit for purpose. So the work has to be done. So Zechariah 13. And from here it's verse 19. Where are we? Well, that can't be right. I must have written it wrong. Yeah, I've written the wrong verse there, but I should just say 9. That's my mistake. I'll cross that out. Apologies. 
So verse 9 in chapter 13 of Zechariah. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And they shall say the Lord is my God. Bringing the people through the fire to refine them. Refine them as silver. As silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. It's got to go through these different afflictions, these different hardships. To be ever more refined and fit for purpose. Now from here it would be Isaiah 48. So over into Isaiah 48. And it will be from verse 10 to 13. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So a furnace of affliction to go through trials, hardships. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and in Israel my called. I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation, the earth and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. This goes back to that God of the cosmos, the order of things. God creates order. Everything works according to its kind. When God created everything in the beginning in the book of Genesis, it was all according to its kind. And when God had finished his creation, it was very good. Everything works together harmoniously in God's creation. There's harmony in that creation. The flower that grows, the sun that wakes up the flower... The bee that harvests from the flower then pollinates the other flowers to create fruit. From the flower the bee makes the honey. We get the honey. Everything works together. It's cohesion. It's all a unified purpose. Nothing is random. It's all perfectly done according to God's perfect design. Now, All this trying and fires to refine for a storm of affliction. So we see that God has control of all things. And also, it's a father that chastises, rebukes and scourges his children whom he loves. So they can learn that they can grow. Punishment to turn from wickedness. So now we go to Psalms. And in the book of Psalms, it's going to be Psalm 66. Now, Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. And sing forth the honour of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works, through the greatness of thy power. Shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee? All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves, Selah. 
O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. For thou, O oh God, hast proved us, thou hast tried us, as silver is tried. Thou portest us into the net, thou laidest affliction upon our loins, Thou hast caused men to rifle ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth have spoken. When I was in trouble... I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats, Selah. Come in here, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. So as we see, they've been tried as silver. And they've been brought through all these afflictions. They come through all these things. They come through all sorts of trouble. Praising God as you go through it. Go through the storm. Never more fit for purpose. Job 23.10 Let's come across to Job chapter 23, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. We go through all these different things. It's to make us ready and ever more fit for purpose. You see, Book of Daniel, in chapter 11, actually talks about those that have to go through more so that they can have white robes. Now you know white robes is in Revelation, so let's go have a look at Daniel in chapter 11. It's going to be verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Go shake off that chaff. Got to be refined ever further, ever more fit for purpose. They have to purge out all the chaff. All the wickedness still in them has to come out. Now when I had had this dream and I was looking at the Bible Gateway website. And the verses kept changing but kept talking about God and the refinement. That refinement he does in us. When I woke up, I thought of Proverbs 27 about iron sharpens iron. The importance of knowing our Bibles. God's there to refine us. This world is wicked. We need to be examining ourselves daily, praising God, seeking his refinement, his rebuke, his chastisement, his leading, his guidance, his wisdom, his counsel. That we walk as we are meant to walk, to speak as we are meant to speak, to do as we are meant to do. That we not be succumbing to the wiles of the world, but focusing and putting God first in all things, always. Trusting in Christ every step of the way. For God is there to refine you. Pray and ask God to refine you ever further. To lead you and to guide you. For we need to be fit for purpose. Iron sharpens iron. Study together. Grow together in the body of Christ. Know your Bibles. Because there's a refinement that's needed. This is as much as I understand of this dream. The important thing is that we follow God. To love God with all our heart, mind, body, strength, spirit and soul. The second like it, love your neighbour as yourself. Treat everyone as you want to be treated. Do unto others as you want done unto yourself. 
If you don't like the behaviour you receive back when one copies and gives you back what you give, it's time to change. Remember, the tongue can start fires as easily as put them out. Think before we speak. We are to be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. Now, with all this refinement, with all the things they're doing out there in their wicked ways, for whatever reason they need to gather gold, for whatever reason their desire to destroy cash and everything else, for whatever reason and their desire to make sure everyone has something, we are to obey God and not men. Ask God to refine you, to strengthen you, and to lead you through this storm. Because the storm will grow. Now, I hope these verses help in some way. To be tried by fire. To be refined in the fire. To come out of the furnace ever more stronger. Ever more refined for God's glorious kingdom. For he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For he is the good shepherd. May you be encouraged. God bless you all.